lecture we will learn about the storage structure of your op operating system or basically your computer so we have the main memory okay so we have the main memory your ram and what happens is only large storage media that is cpu can access directly so you have the cpu which executes all the instruction and the ram is directly connected to your cpu so cpu can access the memory directly so that's why it's called main memory okay because cpu can access this memory what happens now so it is random access what does random access means let's say my memory has 100 or let's say 256 addresses okay and it can store 256 data so now random access means if i want something let's say 128th data i can directly access it i don't have to linearly go from 1 2 3 4 till 128 i can directly say that memory at 128 okay i can access that 190 second memory i can access directly so something you have random access any memory location you can access and it's typically volatile what does it mean if you switch off your ram everything goes off okay nothing is stored no state information will be stored secondary storage then we have the secondary storage which is larger okay so that is extension of the main memory that provides large non-volatile memory you switch off your computer then also whatever was on your hard disk that is not lost that is and of course the size of ram is mostly nowadays in your uh, your laptops it's 4 gb ram and but your hard disk might be like 500 gb of your hard disk okay so magnetic disks rigid metal or glass platters so they are again they are kind of bigger even bigger storage device you have disks now what happens how are the disks again you have to access memory and for that you need some kind of indexing that if i have to access some memory how will i do so your disk is divided into tracks and those tracks are again divided into sectors okay so these we will study later but that is how it is divided so there are tracks okay and in these tracks also there are sectors like this so this disk controller is there so which is again a device controller which allows interaction between your hard disk and your computer or basically the cpu so that is there then we will learn about storage hierarchy so we saw we have a ram which is smaller then you have a hard disk which is larger size so now when we have to access memory so one important thing is how fast i can access okay so this is again human analogy your conscious mind you have your conscious mind whatever is there i remember just now i have read for my exam today for the operating system i know what is operating systems in it is in my conscious mind this is your ram here okay so that is where you should have in your exam you should have everything in your ram fast access you can access fast and crack your entrance exam your interviews then you have your subconscious mind so it's your device okay hard disk okay so where you store so here the huge reservoir is there but you have the access is not so fast okay so the speed is fast for your ram and but the cost is higher if you have something so it is smaller device okay and its cost is higher so if you need a 4 gb ram it will be much costlier than your 500 gb so that cost is very high okay i don't know the price is exactly but your ram is much costlier the same amount of storage will be much costlier than your hard disk and volatility so ram is volatile it doesn't store when switch it's switched off it doesn't store anything now third thing that comes is caching caching is very important okay what happens is copying information into faster storage so let's say a computer cpu is working and it has so some small ram 
and there is a big hard disk is there okay but now what happens cpu is working it can access fast whatever there is in the ram from the disk if it needs to access it will become very slow okay so what happens now i will try to store everything in my whatever is being used very frequently i will try to store it in the ram so that i can access it much faster so that's the way of caching so it stores something into faster storage system main memory can be used as a cache for secondary storage so whatever is hot in this which is being used frequently i will copy it into my ram so this is the cache ram is the cache for your hard disk so storage so even in fact main memory after that also you have some cache which are in fact smaller and much costlier than ram then you have finally the registers which cpu it is connected to cpu directly okay and it's very costly okay so there are only few registers in your computer so this is the hierarchy and caching is very important principle performed at many levels in computer okay so information in use copied from server to faster storage okay so whatever you can access faster so i can in the ram i can access faster but it is smaller memory so store whatever is very important which i am using right now store it in my ram faster storage cache checked first to now if i have cpu now requires something okay so first it will check if it is there in your cpu in your cache or the ram if it is not there then i will now go to a slower hard disk to find if it is there and it should be there so if it is the information used directly from cache fast but if it is not there go to the main hard disk and then copy your data to the ram or the main memory and of course cache is costlier and smaller in size so this is there about your memory of the computer okay so we will stop here in this lecture in the next lecture we will learn about computer system architecture so i hope you understand this thanks a lot